on to the New Testament. Uh, we are reading from the Gospel according to Luke and chapter 24, verse 13. The Gospel according to Luke, chapter 24 and verse 13. Uh, this is a live translation from the church in Kifisia, Athens, Greece. Luke 24, 13. Now that same day, two of them were going to a village called Emos, about seven miles from Jerusalem. And they were talking with each other about everything that had happened. As they talked and discussed these things with each other, Jesus himself came up and walked along with them, but they were kept from recognizing him. He asked them, Why are you discussing together as you walk along? They stood still, their faces downcast. One of them, named Cleopas, asked him, Are you only a visitor to Jerusalem and do not do not know the things that happened there, there in these days? What things, he asked. About Jesus of Nazareth, he replied. Uh, he was a prophet, powerful in the word, and deep before God, and deed before God and all the people. The chief priests and now rulers hand him over to be sentenced to death, and they crucified him. But we had hoped that he was uh, the one who was going to redeem Israel. And what is more, it is the third day since all this took place. In addition, some of our women amazed us. They went to the tomb early uh, this morning, but they didn't find his body. They came and told us that they had seen a vision of angels who said he was alive. Then some of our companions went to the tomb and found it just as the women had said, but him they did not see. He said to them, How foolish you are and how slow of heart to believe all that the prophets have spoken. Did not the Christ have to suffer these things and then enter his glory? And beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he explained to them what was said in all scriptures concerning himself. As they approached the village to which they were going, Jesus acted as if he were going farther. But they urged him strongly, Stay with us, for it is even, nearly evening. The day is almost over. So he went in to stay with them. When he was at the table he, with them, he took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and began to give it to them. Then their eyes were opened, and they, they recognized him, and he disappeared from their sight. They asked each other, Were not our hearts burning within us when he talked with us on the road and opened the scriptures to us? They got up and returned at once to Jerusalem. Then there they found the eleven, and those with them assembled together and, and saying, It is true, the Lord has risen and has appeared to Simon. Amen. They uh, got up and returned at once. At the same time, they went back to Jerusalem. Brothers, sisters, when we are raised up and we immediately return, God will do great things. This is what He has done with Elijah. This is what He has done with the two people going to Emmaus. And this is what He will do when He sees in your heart that we are coming back to God. We are repenting and we are coming back to the truth and His love, His compassions, His mercy. Then God will do new things. We ask from Him to do new things, of course. Acts for salvation, for healing. This is what we're talking about when we say new things. He has one word and He has given it to us. That, that cannot change. But we want the Lord to act in miracles. As He will do new things. This will go by. You, this rather will be done in our lives when we come back, when we repent and we return to Jerusalem, when we return to the Lord, when we humble our hearts in front of God. This is the road that the Bible is showing us. This is the path. And I'm saying this again. The Church of Philadelphia, that is a church of the rapture that, that will take place in the rapture, is... A church that understands that has small power. That church has small power. This is what that church has. See, that church rather kept that word, didn't deny its name, the name of God, but 
her power, the, the church's power is more. But how can that be? You are keeping the word of God and you're not denying his name. Because the power of man is more. As a man, I have don't have much power. But the the power of God is great. That is why the Lord, the, this church, has accepted the word of God and kept it. And that is why God has take, will take that church. And we want to be such a church as he God has taken this church, will take this church and has taken Elijah. And the rapture took place. Few understood it. The, 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 the resurrection taken place. Few believed it, even few understood it. The disciples, even though they heard about it, they didn't uh, understand it. The word of God spoke to them about it again and again. But Peter said, I will follow you even though uh, the word of God spoke about the disciples being scattered. And many times we are speaking out great words, aren't we? But, the, but Christ will erase all words when we come back. And anything that I have said before, anything that I have said and I have repented for, God is going to erase as long as we come back and repent in front of God. And two disciples now, let down, downcast, they go into emails. Why are they leaving? Is that what Christ told them about? Didn't Christ say to them, I will come before you to Galilee? This is what he said. Before he was delivered to the Pharisees and the rulers. Before you, I will go to Galilee. But they went, they went to Emmaus. They were downcast. They were let down. They were afraid. And we can see it through, through their words. One were talking to another. And they, if they're two that are both weak and let down, one will, 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 make, will speak with another. Things will get from, uh, from bad to worse. But the Word of God speaks to someone who's strong to, bur to keep the burdens, to help out the burdened ones. If you have the voice of God, if you have the power of God, and you know what you will say, will build your brother up because God has given it to you and God has filled your heart with love, then you are strong. Go out and stand next to the weak person and you see your weak brother you sing next to you. Because God has given you power. God has given you bread to give. Give then to the one who is in need. Ask from God to reveal things to you. God, please show me where do I need to go? And God will send you off as God will never leave anyone behind. But these two people went to Emmaus. They were talking to one another. They were talking to Christ right after that. Don't you know what happened there in these days? As Christ moved in, with the, in the midst of them, but they were kept from understanding. Their eyes were closed, were shut, so that they may not understand who he was. Now, the question is, why were their eyes shut or closed? I could dare say, as a man, as a person, of course. Why wouldn't you say, I am? It is I. Now, look at my hands. Look at my feet. It is I, Christ. Why didn't he start off with these words? Why were their eyes were kept? Why were their eyes kept? And as Christ opens up their hearts, what are you talking about? Why are you downcast? Are you living alone? In, are you just a visitor? Don't you know what happened during these days in Jerusalem? What? What things? He asked. As if the Lord is trying to open up their hearts, to start them talking, to, for them to cast, to bring out what they have in their hearts so that He may heal it. And that is what Christ wants from us, to open up our hearts. Do not be ashamed. Do not be ashamed to open up your heart to Him. Just like water, I brought my heart out to the Lord. There in your praying corner, go out. Pray to the Lord and bring out to the Lord whatever is troubling you. Do not be ashamed. He is our friend. He is our Father. He is a God. He will never ridicule you or mock you for it. But He is always there to hear you. He is always there to speak out a word to you. Didn't you hear about Jesus of Nazareth, someone who was a prophet, powerful in word and deed before God, and all the people He, he was, they say, 
Now he's not anymore because he was crucified. And the chief priests and now rulers hand him over to be sentenced to death and they crucified him. But we had hoped this is where the hope is. We have no hope anymore. Have that ever occurred to you? Not having no hope? Be completely let down. Be completely uh, fallen down. But Christ is still here. He's trying to do something to help you up. Because the continuation of these two people is not for them to go to Emmaus. Because the future of these two disciples is not for them to be lost, go back to their village and stay there somewhere far along to, b to go back to the same old things. Because there's a work to be done with them too. But these two, Cleopas and the other disciple who are afraid, but he's afraid. He has no power. How can you work with them? When the disciples will be dressed on with the Spirit of God, they will receive power in the day of Pentecost. But Peter, who denied you three times, and even brought a knife against him, and if there was anyone else, we would say, okay, he was afraid. But what about Peter? He himself walked on the, on, on the sea. He saw all these things. He saw you uh, transform. And he himself said that if all peoples depart from you, I will still stay. No, Peter. Peter is still a man, though. And God knows it, that Peter is still a man. And God knows, the Lord knows that we are people too. We are weak as well. And as the heart of Peter was wounded with what he has done for Christ, he was still in the courts of the priests. I do not know what the situation was or how alone he felt knowing that he denied the name of Christ, do not know what kind of strength he would have. But at that time, the Bible says, and the Gospel according to Luke again, that Jesus looked at Peter. He looked at him. He glanced over. He saw him. And what, what happened then? And Peter remembered the word of Christ when he said that you will deny me three times before the rooster crows. And this is where it starts. A humble heart now, a broken heart. A nice position, isn't it? His heart is now broken because of his mistake. But he wants to return. He wants to come back. He's not departing. He's not leaving just like Judah did. But he's struggling to, to find a place to stand in. And now Christ glances over and he reminds him with his eyes the word that he spoke to Peter. And the word of God is going to bring us back. The word of God will make our eyes open, will, will open up our eyes and we will able, we'll be able to see. And that happened with these two. We uh, had hoped that he was the one that was going to redeem Israel. And what is more, it is the third day and since all these took place. And in addition... Uh, some of our women amazed us. They went to the tomb early in the morning, didn't find the body. And some disciples went and they didn't find the body too. But he said to them, how foolish are you and how slow of heart to believe that all the prophets, that the prophets have spoken. And now he starts digging in because the heart now is open. When we open up our hearts to the Lord, now that heart is wide open, a fertile land. A broken heart, a humbled spirit, prepared and ready for the Word of God to be shown into it. And when God sows His seed in your heart and calls out your heart, it will bring results. It will sprout out. 40, 60, 100, we don't know. But it will bring fruit. It will bring results. But it is better. It is worthy for us to have a broken spirit and an open heart, for, heart, for us to have a fertile land, for the Word of God to, fi to, be, uh, to be shown in our hearts. Because without it, nothing will happen. Even if our heart is uh, open and our spirit is humbled, we need the Word of God to be shown into it. Did not the Christ have to suffer these things and then enter His glory? These were the prophecies now. Didn't Christ need to go through all these things? These things are written. Why are you downcast? Why are you losing faith about all the, with all the things that are happening around you? Why are you in sorrow and disbelief? Aren't these things prophesied? 
Are these things supposed to happen? The, are these things supposed to happen in the latter days when the pains of the woman in labor will come? And even worse than these things will happen. And of course, we know that in the seven year reign of the Antichrist, worse things will happen. But God has spoken out. God preached that the word that the mountain of God will be raised up high above all other mountains of the latter days. Isn't these the word of Christ? Hasn't the Lord spoken about the, his servants? Run out and bring all peoples to my house so that my house may be filled. And I am sad and I am downcast and I am let down with my brother and my sister, with my father or my child. And I am uh, praying and I do very well in, do, in praying. But the Lord will come. The time of the Lord will come and God will save and God will return. And he will prepare his church. And he started from the prophets and from the beginning uh, of the prophecies, from Moses to explain the scriptures concerning himself. And now the word of God is about to bring fruit. And as they were walking still for emus, their heart were open. They reached the village. And Jesus acted as if he, was, he were going farther. He doesn't want to force his way in your house. He wants you to invite him in. Say, Lord, come in. Lord, come to my house. Lord, visit my life. And as his, their heart was open, as they were listening to the word of God, and we see in, verse, uh, in the verses, in a few verses down, their hearts were burning up. And they said to Jesus, stay with us, for it is nearly evening. The day is almost over. And as they were at the table and he took the bread and gave thanks and broke it, and he began to give it to them, their eyes were opened. The time of the change came. The time of the transformation came. The time of the new things came for Clopas and the other brother. The new things, brand new things in the midst of the trouble, downcast and sorrow. The time has come and Christ is about to do new things for them. What happened? Did something change? Their heart changed. And if you, my heart and your heart changes, all things will change. They will go back to Christ. They will return. Immediately they did. They returned at once to Jerusalem in verse 33 to go and find the, the church, the brothers, the apostles, the disciples. Always you need and we need to go back to the church of Christ. Do not forget do not leave it out. You need to go together and be with your brethren. And as they went all together, they found one another. And the word of God said that even someone uh, were in disbelief, the Lord again spoke to them and studied from within the word of God, Moses and the prophets and the psalm. To, to talk to them about the word of God and indeed they believed what happened then did something change again they were afraid they were gathered together but the beginning was made and now the Lord said you need to remain to Jerusalem until you receive power from above and the disciples took the right decision since you have taken the right decision and you are now back you need to wait for the coming of the Spirit. And we see all of them hidden. And we consider it to be a great place for the visit of God. But for peoples, that place that the, the disciples were in is just a hidden place. They were hidden because of the fear of the Jews, but now they have Jesus in their hearts. They believe in the Word of God. They are keeping the Word of God, and they are waiting for the new things that God is about to do. And in the day of Pentecost, a wind, force, a forceful wind came, and the life of Peter changed, and the life of James changed, the life of the apostles and the disciples rather changed, because now these disciples will be sent out by the power of the Spirit to preach out to the world. And what will happen? Great salvation. And the Word of God will be um, preached to the nations. And, then it, and we need for Christ to dress us in with that power of the Spirit. 
as our hearts will be coming closer to him as we have accepted the word of God as we are now humbling ourselves in front of God and we need to confirm that we are not better than our ancestors as Elijah said we're not better but the Lord is going to lift the mountain of his high yes but what I know is that I am worthless I am a man with fears but our God is alive and we are waiting for His coming from, time, from any hour now. Just stay in Jerusalem and be filled with the Spirit of God, the Spirit that God has sent for His great blessings. Amen.